Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Golden Reviewer comparison. Today we have two Galaxy S21 Ultra. On the left, the silver one is the Exynos 2100 variant, and on the right is the Snapdragon 888 variant. Today we will be doing a comprehensive 5 hour long battery life comparison between these two devices, so that you can know which of these has a better battery life. First, let me show you that I set both to the same brightness, around the 30%, and I enabled adaptive smoothness, which means 120Hz, and also the full QHD resolution. Because we paid good money for this display, and we should make full use of it. And both are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, and there is no SIM card in either of these. The airplane mode is turned on, and I'll keep other settings like location settings, sync, and everything same, so that this comparison is as fair as possible. And I've actually installed a battery widget to show the battery percentage on top of the display all the time, so that you can view the battery percentage during any part of the video. And then we have this Xiaomi Mi 20 Pro in the center as a stopwatch. Now let's start the first round of test. This will be a one hour long web browsing test. I'm using this software. I'll put the link down below. So this software actually allows the phone to self refresh a web page automatically. And it will actually cycle through a few different websites like uh, Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Netflix to make the test as comprehensive and as controlled as possible. And after this one hour web browsing test, I'll do another one hour gaming test. And after that will be a one hour video test. And after that is one hour social media test. And lastly, it will be one hour camera test involving photos and videos. So make sure you watch until the end. And now let's just fast forward to view the result of this one hour web browsing test. Now both devices has run the web test for exactly one hour. Let's check the battery. So both devices use the same amount of battery percentage of 9% and they are now sitting at 91%. So there is no difference at all. This is already looking pretty good for the Exynos because we know that Exynos used to be less power efficient and I think a lot of you will expect that the Exynos will lose in this test. But so far, it's holding up very very well. Now let's move on to the second part of the test, which is a 1 hour gaming test. In this test, I will use PUBG mobile game and I will play alternatively on each of the device. While I play on one device, I will use the other device to spectate to make sure that their load are exactly the same. And this time I've actually heard your feedback. You tell me that the Sahoo map has higher load than the classic map I've always been using. So okay, this time I'll use that map and every time I'll land in the camp area which the load will be the highest. By the way, both devices are running at the smooth graphics settings and 60 FPS. If you watch my previous PUBG Mobile gaming comparison, you know that this is because higher settings is not available on the Exynos. And I have to keep this test as fair as possible, so I'll set both to this setting. Although the Snapdragon can actually run HDR and 60. Alright, let's go then.
Okay, now both devices run the PUBG mobile game for one hour and let's check the battery consumption. To my surprise, the Exynos 2100 actually pulls ahead in this round of test. The battery dropped 17% from 91 to 74, while the Snapdragon S21 Ultra used 1% more battery from 91 to 33. So now the odds is increasingly more leaning towards the Exynos side, which is to surprise of many. And next round will be a one hour YouTube video playback test. I've chosen a very beautiful nature landscape footage. Credit to the original uploader. I've put the link down below in the comments. So you guys can go and support the author. And I'll also set the resolution to 2K, which is the highest these devices can support. And now let's go. Now we've finished the one hour YouTube test and in total, these devices has been running for three hours. Let's check the battery. In this one hour YouTube test, both devices use exactly same amount of battery again at 6%. So now the Exynos variant is sitting at 68% while the Snapdragon is at 67%. There is a 1% battery difference, which is rather small. But I think this is looking very, very good for the Exynos already. Next, I'll do a one hour social media test. In this test, I'll use two apps. One is Facebook, the other one is Reddit. And I'll also use this software called Easy Scroll. So this software will help me to keep scrolling through the feed of the two apps so that I don't have to scroll this mechanically for one whole hour. And also by using this software, I can control the scrolling pace and speed to make it more consistent and more fair. I also put the link to this software down below in the comments. So if you want to check it out, go and support the developers. All right, now let's go with the fourth test social media for one hour. Okay, that's one whole hour of non-stop scrolling and browsing. Let's check the battery. In this test, the Snapdragon 888 is a little bit better. It used 11% of battery, while the Exynos used 12%. So now they are both sitting at 56% of battery, which if you ask me is an amazing result. This is over four hours of screen on time which also includes one hour of PUBG Mobile gaming. So this is very, very good battery life from both. And now let's move on to the final round, which should also be the most battery consuming round, which is using the camera. And in this round, for, for the first half an hour, I'll use two different apps to continuously take photos. One of which is the test app I introduced to you earlier in round one. And the other one is a time-lapse app, which will take photo every one second. So this part is for testing how much power it requires to take photos. And then for the next half an hour, I'll actually let these devices record 40, 60 FPS videos for straight half an hour. So we'll see how long the battery will last when recording Ultra HD videos.
Now we've finished the final round, the camera round, and let's check the battery. And using camera is indeed very, very heavy on battery. The Exynos used 23% of battery in this round, while the Snapdragon used 24%. And with that, we finish our 5-hour screen-on test. And the winner is the Exynos S21 Ultra. I'm so happy to see this after about 3-4 years of total failure from the Exynos, we finally have a very decent Exynos chip that is at least as good as the Snapdragon in day-to-day -day usage. Well, just as shown in my previous gaming comparison test, in some super heavy games like Genshin Impact or maybe others, the Exynos might still lag behind, behind of the Snapdragon a little bit. but. I mean, not everyone play heavy games every day, right? So if you are not so into the heavy games and your market has an Exynos, you don't have to feel bad anymore. You just go ahead with the Exynos and it's not a bad choice at all. In fact, we see that it's actually even a little bit better than the Snapdragon variant when it comes to day-to-day -day battery life. Some of you may ask, uh, Golden Reviewer, I see your previous Twitter and your community post. You actually did a very uh, rigorous uh, spec in test on the Exynos 2100 and Snapdragon 888, right? You told us the CPU on the Exynos 2100 is still a little bit less efficient than that of the Snapdragon 888. Uh, then how come in this day-to-day -day battery life test, the Exynos can pull ahead? It's contradicting your previous tests, right? Well, if you ask me, I can make a few guesses, but of course I don't work at Samsung, I don't know this for sure. But I think firstly, the Exynos is an in-house processor. It's designed and manufactured all by Samsung and used in Samsung products. So I think the optimization of Exynos will be better than the optimization of the Snapdragon, at least on Samsung devices. It's just like Apple, where they produce everything from software to hardware, so they have amazing optimization. I think Samsung is going in that direction as well. And another reason might be that the Exynos 2100 actually has very good mid cores, the A78 cores. If you look at my spec in results, the A78 cores are actually more powerful than the Snapdragon and they are not that inefficient at all. So I guess when tuning the governor of the Exynos 2100, Samsung will try to prioritize tasks on the mid-cores rather than the inefficient big-core. And because the mid-cores are powerful enough, you won't feel any uh, lag or any slowness while the battery life can be improved. So I think this is an advantage of the Exynos 2100. Alright guys, so that's all for today's video. And if you enjoyed it, if you want to see more of such content, please give me a thumb up, help me share the video to your friends, and lastly, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.